Hi everyone, this is Dave Klein, your host for Raptor Adventures. I'm excited about this particular episode because it's an area of the Susquehanna River I've never been on before. We are going to explore the area around the Muddy Creek Access. And the Susquehanna River in particular is something worth noting and knowing what it is you're on when you're out there because it's pretty special. In the earliest days by the Lenni Lenape Indians, it was called the Siskiwahane. The Siskihewane, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That's one of the names that was called, and uh, there are other names according to folklore and legend, but let's go with that one for right now. But the Susquehanna is a major river located in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States. It overlaps the lower northeast. At 444 miles long, it is the largest river on the east coast of the United States. By watershed area, it's the 16th largest river in the United States and also the longest river in the early 21st century during the continental United States that did not have commercial boat traffic. The Susquehanna River forms from two main branches, the North Branch, which rises in Cooperstown, New York, and the West Branch, which rises in Western Pennsylvania and joins the main branch near Northumberland in Central Pennsylvania. The river drains 27,500 square miles, including nearly half of the land area of Pennsylvania. It's absolutely amazing. The basin includes portions of the Allegheny Plateau, the Appalachian Mountains, several water gaps, big zigzagging flows of water from various tributaries, and it goes, again, all the way from New York through Pennsylvania into northeastern Maryland, where it dumps into the Chesapeake Bay, and then goes into the ocean, but not before it provides about half of the Chesapeake Bay's freshwater flow. I think it's interesting to know that the Susquehanna River is one of the oldest existing rivers in the world. You have to stop and think about that. In the history of the entire world, the Susquehanna River is one of the oldest existing rivers. And this means that the river is about 320 to 340 million years older than the mountain ridges through which it flows. The ridges resulted from the Allegheny uplift events when Africa slammed into the northern part of Euro-America, as most people call it. And in those days, the Appalachian Mountains didn't look anything like we see them today, sort of nice rolling benign hills. They looked wild and rugged and woolly like the Alps or the Rocky Mountains, they were tall, but they've been worn down through the eons. And so that is something to think. When you're out there on that river, you are, <laughs> you are really commuting with something that's ancient and revered and respected uh, in nature. As I said earlier, the Lenni Lenape people had a name for it. And the name that they called it basically kind of, most people think means muddy river, some think it means Oyster River. It doesn't really matter what it means. Uh, there was an Iroquois family that described it as the stream that falls toward the south or the long crooked river. Whatever you want to call it, this river is loaded with fish and supports all kinds of waterfowl and bird life as well. Everything from eagles to rarer birds you can see along the Susquehanna River. As far as fish go, smallmouth, largemouth, all kinds of catfish, snakeheads have started invading the southern areas of the Susquehanna and they're working their way north. There are muskies in there, there are walleye in there, and of course all your panfish are present as well. So with that little bit of background information, I think you can appreciate this episode a little bit more and also your next visit to the Susquehanna River. If you look on the screen right now, you see I drew a red X on the map. That is where we are fishing in this episode. And that magic place is called the Muddy Creek Boat Launch. They have rules and regulations as do all boat launches. And of course, I always obey those and I hope you will as well so that everybody can enjoy this recreational treat. Let's go. I'm ready to put my yak in the river and go. Got two trolling rods and two live bait rods on board today. And I'm gonna head upriver, which is up that way. Fish on.
<laughs> there we go. There's the first fish of the trip. Nice little smallmouth. Let's get him on board. It's a good way to start the, the morning here. This is a stretch of the Susquehanna I've never fished before. And uh, I didn't even get into the structure that I thought would really be productive. I haven't gotten there yet. So I'm about eight minutes off of the boat launch, putting the kayak in, and got this nice little smallmouth. A lot of treble hooks flying around there. There he is. And we're gonna go ahead and let him go. Goodbye. Thank you. Well, this part of the river certainly is a wonderland. It's all kinds of islands and rock outcroppings and it's kind of amazing. Of course, with rock outcroppings and lots of rocks in the water comes the ever-present chance that you're going to lose the brand new white Yozori lure you just bought for eight bucks. That first fish I caught uh, for a small mouth. Okay, there's a hit, there's a hit, there's a hit. And I'll continue the story later. Anyway, what I was saying was that first $8 Yozuri white lure that I just got, a shad color, that was lost. But this is the hit we got. Nice. Oh, that's a largemouth right there. Nice largemouth bass. We're going to bring him aboard. Thank you, Mr. Bass. Ugh. This is on the troll. This is the lure. It's a Yozori perch imitation with a little bit of flash on the back there, that tail. And here's the fish. Nice Susquehanna River, largemouth bass. Look at you. <laughs> and we're gonna let you go. Anytime you're ready. Oh, he wasn't in any hurry at all. You see that? I don't know if you can see it, but what I got snagged in, what I was telling you about is there's a lot of structure here, which is great. Susquehanna River is known for its bass fishing, but boy, there could be all kinds of things in here. Anything from muskies to snakeheads to catfish to whatever but these submerged rocks like this one here i have to watch my pedal drive and my rudder because they stick down and i'm only trolling like at one mile an hour but um when i'm trolling a stick bait like that white yozuri that i lost and it gets hung up deep on a rock and then i had it on braid to make matters worse what happened was i messed around with it too much and i cut the braid off the the rock cut the braid so that was that was the end of that eight dollar war but at least it caught one fish <laughs> so let's uh turn around here and this is this is amazing let's go explore this wonderful stretch a little bit more well i followed this seam of the river up as far as i could There's, there's no place else to go. So we're gonna turn around and troll back down and go around the next part of the island. It's really something down, down here, wow. 
Right here in this stretch, I had a silver and black lure on. I got slammed, huge fish. I think it might've been a musky, but it wrapped me up and I couldn't get it in. Okay, well that one hurt because not only did I lose another lure, there's another, that was a $10 lure, uh, but I lost a big fish. That fish, that either had to be a very, very nice sized catfish or maybe even a muskie. Who knows? I'll never get to see it. It went down and by the time I got uh, the camera gear ready, it went down to the bottom and it wrapped itself around a log with a prong sticking up there. And there was just no way. I tried everything to get that out of there, but uh, it just didn't work. Meanwhile, I just saw a bald eagle fly on by. So let's see if we can navigate up through this stretch here where the river is sort of making a fork. I'm actually going from west to east across the river now. It's, it's a big river. And I got this far and I met my match. I could not propel myself up through this current that was coming through here. You can see it was pretty intense over there. I zoomed in on it and over here was the other option. And it doesn't look like much, but trust me, it was way too much for me. So I sat back, relaxed and enjoyed looking at whatever scenery I could. And look at this guy, right there he is. Big old turtle, just sitting there sunning himself like he's at the Riviera, just hanging out, no suntan lotion needed, just gonna get a little raise, gonna get myself dried up nice and warm, being an amphibian, I depend on that to heat my body temperature up, to get me all fired up, charged up, and ready for whatever I'm gonna do during the day. This guy just hung out and stared at me, I liked it. Fast forwarding, I found and scurried up another interesting looking seam, found a hole and wham. Okay, here we go. Got a, that's a little largemouth bass on a perch lure. Okay. In this spectacular scenery. Wow. We're going to hit this rock here in a second. That's all right. We'll let that slow our progress. And uh, we'll go ahead and get you off and release you. Thank you, sir. Oh, man. After the frustration of losing that big fish, I mean, that, and that was really big. And two lures. <laughs> it's nice to be back on the the tally board here again I keep my drag set really loose and uh, let's get him unhooked just like that good to have tools like this along so you can release the fish Good job, let's let you go. Okay, here we go. When you're ready. And there he goes. Going out behind the back of the kayak, okay. I don't bend that way anymore. I hope these guys aren't here for me. It's like the last two times I went fishing, I attracted buzzards, vultures. <laughs> I, I mean, that looks fun and everything. So as long as they stay up there and I'm down here, all will be well. I wish they have, could have like fish spotters. You know, if you could have some kind of remote control little collar you could attach to your favorite buzzard, let it fly up there and let you see the fish. This is really, again, some remarkably unique and gorgeous environment right here. I've got these rock outcroppings. You can see how they've been smoothed by centuries of wear and tear from the elements and the water and the wind and uh, we're gonna go ahead and pedal up into this see if we can get a fish on the trick is navigating this because i've got this rudder and this pedal drive sticking down but oh man look at look at it up there wow hey this is fun and it's 
clearly easier to troll like this with a pedal drive. I used to troll like this with my paddle kayak, my ocean kayak, my Malibu 2 hull. And uh, that was really a circus. You're paddling along, paddling along. I was holding the rod with the rod holder. Sometimes before that, I was holding it with my, my leg pressed against the keel. And then you'd get a fish on it and be like, okay, now what? Now what happens? What happens next? Look at this. Wow. I mean, this is great if you just want to come down and paddle around. You don't even have to fish. Let's go up through this channel. Okay, actually, I don't have enough superlatives to describe how amazing this is right here. Kayaking through here. I'm going up river right now, but because there's this maze of channels and cliffs and rock bluffs, there's, there's a current, but it's not crushing me, so I'm easy uh, pedaling here through it. Holy cow. <laughs> you know what? This brings out the little kid in me. Look how that rock bluff there has been eroded through the elements. Man. And I've never been in here before, so I have no idea where this particular channel or finger leads. The last one I tried to get up, it was only about like a one foot drop, but the current was so much I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do it didn't have the horsepower. I pedaled my legs off, but uh, to no avail. Wow. And we got a wild something growing there. See it like right in the dead center of the screen right now. Just a wild flowering shrub doing its own thing out here in nature. And lucky us, we got here at the right time of year to appreciate it. Oh, there's definitely water flow here. This current here, this is a big old deep hole. I feel like I want to cast a couple live baits in here. So let's creep up here to the cliff. Oh man, come on. Yeah, I don't know if I can make it up through there, but I can definitely come up here and cozy up to the side of this cliff. This is incredible. <laughs> wow. This is a big wow. And I love seeing what's out in the natural world, and I always feel like I want to explore it. And if I don't know what it is, I want to learn. But upon closer inspection, it turns out this is a full-blossoming mountain laurel. The Pennsylvania state flower is the mountain laurel, even though it's really a shrub. This one was gorgeous. See how the current's going by us here? I'm going to try and sit here in this slack water and see if we can get something done. Okay, here's a fish on. I'm moving the boat. That's a channel cat. I knew there had to be you guys in this hole. All right, let's get you up here. Ooh, stop swimming under the boat. That is a channel catfish. Nice one. Not huge, but they fight like crazy. And he was in this hole sitting in here, and he was uh, susceptible to a worm. Little worm and split shot. One of the oldest tricks in the book. Let's see if we can get him off.
Okay. Your chance to go free. Go ahead. And off he goes. Thank you. Well, after that channel cat was released, that was it for the action in there. And some kids came down and were enjoying the water and jumping off the rocks and stuff. So I moved on. I'm a little bit out of breath because <laughs> the current was really pushing through that channel. And uh, what a great leg workout I just had. I didn't think I was going to make it. But surprisingly, I did. You can see that bridge. That's the bridge goes east to west, west east. I came over that bridge on my way to get to the Muddy Creek Access Boat Ramp, which is a Pennsylvania state maintained facility. Very nice. All right, there's some stuff here I gotta navigate around, so let me put this down. Here I'm in a seam. I came up the river from that direction down there. You can kind of see the river flowing by there. Past those branches. And then I came down in this seam. Boy, I got snagged a lot. I lost a lot of lures on this trip. But I came down this seam here. For perspective, here's the Holtwood power plant right here. It's just a little bit upriver from the bridge. I found another nice deep hole. You have to watch this closely because you'll see the shadow of the bass. It was huge, but I lost it. And expletives came out that you won't hear. Boy, good hit, good hit. Come on, come to the boat. <laughs> oh! I'm gonna go on back down the river now and have a little supper time. And I'm gonna admit it, I was feeling a little dejected at that point because that was the second big fish I lost for the day. At least I got to sort of see that one, but that one tore the hook right off my braided line, and that's pretty hard to do. But in a moment, I was happy again. Here we go, in this little hole right here. I think it's gotta be a catfish because I was just dropped a worm on there and let it sink. Oh, yeah, wait, wait. what? It? Yeah, it's a channel cat, sure it is. <laughs> ah, and, and a well-fed channel cat at that. Look at you, bud. Okay, let's get him in now, though. This is six pound test. Sometimes they wrap it and then that's it. Oh, come on. Come on. There he is. All right. Look how he's been eating, or she, wow. Yeah, wow, this this is a nice one. Woohoo! You gotta be careful when you handle these because right here, there's some there's some serious spikes right there. Right here and here. Okay, we're gonna let her go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Channel catfish. We're gonna let this one go through the, through the bottom of the kayak here. At least we'll try it. There he goes. You can see it. Vaguely, you could see it go through. That was the easier release for me. Those things are slippery. I'm still cruising along. Hoping for that one big fish for the day. Doesn't always happen, but you know, if you don't come out, it definitely won't happen. So troll along, troll on. That's the way I see it anyway. It's about quarter till seven at night. I've been out here all day. And uh, what a beautiful, peaceful place it is. Now I will say paddling against the current in a river like this one, the Susquehanna, as compared to hanging out on a lake, that's two different levels of energy output when you're the motor. But it's good, it's good exercise. 
Come on, we need a fish now, let's go. You can't beat the scenery, look at that. Looks like multi-flower rose coming out of the knocked down tree. It's got like a little troll hole right there at the base. A little troll hole. <laughs> but what we want are the fish. And no sooner did I ask than I became a recipient. Here we go, fish on right along the bank here. We're in the evening session now. What do we got here? Yeah, smallmouth, smallmouth, smallmouth bass. Okay, let's get him in. So now I ate my Italian sandwich, took a little half hour break, came out. Now I'm in the evening session and you know, wasn't long, maybe 10 minutes. And we get this guy, little smallmouth bass here. So thank you, Mr. Smallmouth Bass or Mrs. Smallmouth Bass. One day I'll figure out how to tell the two of you apart. But uh, let's go ahead and release you. <laughs> you ready? Ready? Let go of my thumb. There you go. Goodbye. Okay, well, I got to admit it. I'm feeling a little tired right now. It's uh, a little bit after 7 o'clock at night. And caught some fish in the evening, lost some. That's the way it went all day long. Catch some, lose some. Boy, that first big thing I caught, whatever that was, and then lost because it wrapped around that log. Ooh, that's the kind that you remember for a long time. But I have to say I'm a little tired because of the current of the river. As I said earlier, it's a lot different than paddling or pedaling on a lake. And it's kind of taking its toll now. I'm tired, I'm gonna rest well tonight. Good day, there was fish. Frustrating day as fishing can often be, because I lost, what, four or five lures at eight to 15 bucks a piece, <laughs> you know. Uh, as I think about it, it was a little bit costly for me today because I did a little damage to my, my pedal drive. Just the lockdown bolt, I can get a new one of those, no big deal, easy enough, and I have the, the paddle I can use to paddle back. And a little bit of uh, rudder damage because I hit a submerged rock that I couldn't see. Now that is, I think, one thing I'd tell you about if you've never been here before and you bring a pedal yak or you're gonna go ahead and troll with the power boat, uh, be careful because there are these rocks here in the Susquehanna and you just sometimes can't see them till you literally hit them. So you either gotta really know where you're going or you gotta really keep an eye out. And when the water's murky like it was today, that's a little bit tough. Or you just take it slow and easy and just beware that uh, this kind of thing can can occur in here. But all in all, a great sunset. And I thank you for coming with me. This is Raptor Adventures. I'm your host and producer, Dave Klein. I'll see you next episode. I want you to see the view. I can't stop on the bridge, but the view of where we were fishing today. Oh man, look down there. <laughs>